Good evening, everyone who are watching this program from India and good afternoon to those who are watching it from Portugal. Welcome all of you to the live program number 130 at Orthopedic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is distinguished faculty, Dr. Nuno Gomez from Portugal. Born and raised in Porto, Portugal, he has graduated from Porto University Medical School in 1996 with several clerkships and international student experiences abroad on the way, including being the first Erasmus student from a Portuguese medical college. He completed his general internship in Porto and Macau, China, and his orthopedic residency in Porto as an army doctor in 2006, which included several fellowships in France and Spain. He maintained since then his public and private practice in the Porto region, including roles as the clinical director of the orthopedic department of the Armed Forces Hospital in Porto, with special dedication to shoulder surgery for over 17 years now. He's currently the vice chairman of the European Shoulder Associates of ESCA and is a frequent contributor to international training events. So today, it's my great honor to introduce you to Dr. Nuno Gomez from Porto, Portugal. Over to you, Dr. Gomez. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gopalans, and uh, uh, thank you for the kind invitation. It's a real pleasure to be here and share with you uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, notions on, uh, on this uh, very interesting topic, patient-specific instrumentation for shoulder arthroplasty. Now, PSI provides the surgeon with a guide similar to this one in order to assist in the implantation of, uh, of the glenoid component in a, in a prosthesis. Now, what's the background behind all this? We all know that uh, placement of, uh, of the glenoids uh, in an accurate position is of major importance because a malpositioned uh, glenoid base plate uh, is at risk of dislocation and uh, also of increased wear and loosening after uh, some time. So uh, also the risk for revision is higher if the placement of that glenoid uh, base plate is not the best. Also in revisions in cases of major uh, deformities of the anatomy with a major glenoid bone loss, uh, placement of that base plate is quite hard and uh, it can be quite challenging. So what's the rationale behind uh, this technology? It's a technology uh, to help you out in the placement of that base plate using a CT scan. A CT scan that has to be done, performed uh, based on under a specific protocol. And then uh, a 3D reconstruction is made from those uh, uh, 2D cuts, uh, plain classical uh, CT scans, uh, in order to define the desired location and size of the implant. And I mean the glenoid uh, base plates by means of a custom made instrumentation to assist in the placement of that guide wire, the guide wire that helps you out in that placement. Now, there are some uh, um, uh, nice studies in the, in the early stages of, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, technology. Uh, back in 2011, uh, this was out and showed clearly that uh, when you have a plan, that's quite a good start, but executing it is often difficult. So not only you get to the software and, and uh, uh, can have a 2D or a 3D uh, reconstruction of that glenoid, which can help you out. But oftentimes that's not enough. When using a standard instrumentation, it's quite common to, to have some in inaccuracy and inconsistency in the placement of the KY, which is the step that helps you in the placement and the preparation of the glenoid. And you also know that uh, when using 2D reconstructions like uh, what you have here in this image, uh, you may be misled because it's not the same as having a 3D reconstruction. As you can see in these pictures, uh, this 2D cut, it seems like uh, this is a zero degree of retroversion you're putting in that uh, glenoid. But when you have the complete 3D uh, reconstruction, you realize that's not really a zero version, a zero degree version, but uh, some degrees of reconstructions. Once you have the complete uh, scapula and you're able to define the plane of the scapula. Now, computer navigation, uh, that's, uh, I wouldn't say where it all started, but it was uh, the beginning. 
Uh, this was quite common, especially in the knee. Then it was used uh, namely by this uh, Belgian group from my friend Verbort and also Gilt Leclerc. Uh, they use this in the shoulder as well. However, uh, it's not really as easy to use and uh, straightforward because all the setup in the, in the OR uh, can become a little bit uh, cumbersome. Also, you can have complications like uh, iatrogenic lesions from placing the pins because you need to reference uh, anatomic landmarks in the native bone, like placing pins in the coracoid in some places of the scapula, and then estimating from those reference uh, locations, um, uh, define the location of the, of the central K wire. So oftentimes those pins can uh, lead to fractures, they can get loose, which lead to inaccurate registration of those anatomical landmarks. And for all these reasons, it may increase uh, the operative time by over 20%. So lots of disadvantages. Uh, and that's where PSI uh, came in. Uh, the rationale behind it, it's, it's similar. So helping the surgeon with uh, the placement of, uh, of uh, the K wire, the central K wire in the glenoid, uh, but a lot easier. So using a 2D uh, CT, can, CT scans, um, a 3D reconstruction of the scapula is performed. And then the plane of the scapula is defined by three points, the inferior scapular angle, the glenoid center, and the trigonum spinae, which is uh, the intersection between the, the scapular spinae and the, the medial margin of the, of the scapula. And from there, you can have the plane of the scapula defined by these three points, uh, just like uh, the, the neutral axis or the central glenoid line defined by these two points. And from here, you can define the version you want to that uh, glenoid, like so, and also the inclination, like so. Now, this is uh, uh, the software you can use and you have available in the markets. There's an update to this uh, 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 software you can use. And also, obviously, you have a couple of more uh, companies besides this one uh, to help you out. So you can uh, kind of play around and uh, place and choose the location of the base plate. You can choose the size of the base plate and then uh, just uh, move around and see how it sits in that, uh, in that bone. You can change the inclination like so. You can change uh, the depth of the glenoid uh, base plate. You can move it proximally, distally, inferiorly, I mean, then the depth of the base plate. So it's just playing around as you can see. Uh, then uh, try a smaller, uh, base plate as well. Check the length of that central screw like so and making sure it's not perforating the glenoid vault. So it allows you uh, a whole bunch of uh, possibilities to, uh, to enable you to place it with a good position on bone um, and with the best um, uh, with the best version and inclination and, uh, and all that. Now, I think I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit because this is uh, uh, several, several examples of uh, how to use this. And then you can fade in, fade down the bone to check on the amount of, uh, of uh, the percentage of bony apposition of the, of the metallic implant on bone, as you can see. There's a, a small perforation of the glenoid vault, but not such a big deal. Again, checking the amount, the percentage of uh, acquisition of, um, of the metallic implant on the bone and so on. Now you can do this for the, for the reverse and you can also do it for the anatomical, for the anatomical prosthesis, as you can see. Now that's changing for the anatomic um, glenoid implant. Again, you can do exactly the same. Change the size according to the native size of that specific patient. You can either use a large, medium, or small um, polyethylene, uh, in this case, uh, glenoids. And again, changing the version, the inclination, 
um, and uh, and and the correct the best correct placement for that glenoid. And at the end, you just uh, log in and confirm your choices, and then it goes for the company to to build that that uh, guide for you, which is sent over to your place or to your hospital. So this is what's performed and built by the company in case you're not able to do it yourself because there are some hospitals that can do it that have the, the possibility of doing it themselves. This is a sterile uh, resin guide and also a glenoid vault replica that helps you out in uh, comparing it. So you can put it side to side with the native glenoids and helps you with the, with the placement of that K-wire. So it's designed this guide, which is this one, with two tunnels, which is in this case, one tunnel for the reverse and one tunnel uh, for placement of the anatomical. So it allows you to choose between, uh, between both. And it's designed to fit on the surface and border of the glenoid. So this is how you do it. This is uh, uh, interoperatively, so you have the glenoid and on the outside you have a glenoid vault replica and the guide as well. And uh, you can do this drawing just to, to have a rough estimation of uh, where it will sit in the native glenoid like so. You have to uh, enlarge a little bit uh, the, um, the exposure, not that much, you just have to make sure that all, um, all the bony prominences around the glenoid are uh, easy to see and accessible. You have to keep the osteophytes and all bony prominences because they were considered in the CT scan, um, in the CT scan plan. Uh, you just have to remove the soft tissues to allow you to put the, the, the glenoid, uh, I mean the guide on top of the glenoid uh, uh, in, in, in the best way, with a slightly more extensive exposure, not that much. So this is what you have. You have the guide sitting on top of the glenoid and the K wire that goes through the tunnel. In this case, this is uh, the, the tunnel of the guide, the superior one, which is uh, the guide for the anatomical prosthesis because the lower one has uh, an inferior uh, inclination, which is classical of uh, reverse prosthesis. And this is what you get once you place the K-wire and take out the guide. Now, this is one of the most important steps of, uh, of uh, shoulder arthroplasty for those of you who are not uh, that familiar or acquainted with, uh, with the technique. Uh, because once you get here, the rest is, is the same as using standard instrumentation. So you don't have to, to change that much uh, of the technique by using this technology. Now, what do you have in the literature? You have several, um, uh, several series and studies stating from some, some years ago, from the early stages of the technology to today, stating that the, 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 um, the, the accuracy and the alignment of the K-wire is much better when using this technology and uh, you, you can have uh, much better results in the placement of the K-wire with no te technical difficulties or, or special complications because the technique is basically the same. Also, this uh, nice uh, prospective trial also showed that uh, using this planning, pre-op planning and software and uh, the special uh, guide is feasible and it definitely adds accuracy to the glenoid placement. So they showed that improvement in the component position, and I mean the glenoid component positioning, is more important, especially in severe deformities. In those cases where retroversion was higher than 16 degrees or retroversion was uh, lower than uh, 70 degrees, it was not that much of, uh, of use. It was uh, uh, useful, but not uh, so important. Uh, however, they could not define the clinical uh, relevancy of, uh, of this technique because there, was, there were no studies in the long run. Other studies reached the same conclusion. This group in 2014 showed that uh, placement was highly accurate and uh, it was similar to computer navigation. But unlike computer navigation, 
this uh, came uh, with no additional steps or difficulties. Also, Gilles Walsh um, studied the same in the early stages, and this is uh, uh, images of the software that allows you, with, with several cuts and three, 3D reconstructions, allows you to choose the best placement for the K-wire, and then the guide, which has a different look, but the rationale is exactly the same, allows you to place the K-wire like so. He also showed in cadaver specimens, actually that study uh, that I showed before was in cadaver uh, specimens. He showed that the accuracy of placement of the guide pins, as you can see, is very, very good, very close uh, to what was, um, what was uh, chosen preoperatively in the software. Again, the, the same Belgian group uh, a few years later showed that, uh, that um, variability in placement of the K-wire was uh, highly reduced um, after using this technology and the risk of extreme inclination errors when placing it was very low, both in total and reverse shoulder arthroplasty with this technique. This large uh, multi-surgeon study in 70 arthritic uh, cadaver specimens showed the same. PSI uh, allows you to have a significantly more accurate placement of the K-wire in terms of aversion and uh, inclination with fewer instances of significant uh, malpositioning. And this was clear, uh, this increased accuracy in pin orientation and also, and also in terms of location. And this, this was even more significant uh, with, the, with, the low, with, the, with the less experienced of the three surgeons that participated. So clearly this is an advantage for those uh, um, uh, surgeons with, uh, with less experience. So it allows you to reduce the variability in the guidance. It should result in fewer malpositioned glenoids and it's very useful in severe deformations, namely when bone grafting is required. And this is exactly one of those cases. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a loss of uh, uh, glenoid bone in glenoid, quite extensive, which uh, will make it uh, very difficult to, to, to place the, the, the K-wire and place the glenoids with, uh, with a strong and stable uh, apposition. So as you can see, this, uh, uh, this was a large effusion that was, also, that was already uh, clear on the, the MRI. And uh, just um, uh, aspirating it in the first steps of the surgery. And you can see on the right, the major destruction of, uh, of, that, uh, of that joint. And uh, once you've got the, the guide and also the glenoid vault model, as you can see here, you place the guide, which is this, you have a special uh, or specific zone where you can uh, place your thumb to, stabil to stabilize the, the guide against the glenoid. And then in this case, it's a reverse, placing the K-wire through the most inferior tunnel, as you can see. So once you've got it in place, so this is uh, we mean the K-wire, it's placed on the glenoid and it's done. And the next step is just taking out uh, the guide. So once you've got the K-wire in place, take out the drill, take up the guide and then you have the K wire in place like so. As you can clearly see here, this is the glenoid model and this tiny little hole is uh, where the K wire is expected to be placed. So this major destruction of the anterior part of the glenoid would make it very hard in, uh, with, without a specific guide to know exactly where to place it. You would most probably tend to place it in the cartilage, in what's left of, uh, of the glenoid's cartilage surface. But in fact, the best location to get a good purchase of the central screw would be on the part of the glenoid that's gone. So in this specific case and in cases uh, similar to this one, it's mandatory you have some kind of 
a similar to this one. As you can see, you've got the K wire in place in here on the left, and then on the right, uh, the reaming and the perforation of a larger central screw. And this, this whitish part is what's left of the native glenoid. So in this case, clearly bone grafting was necessary. You can use um, both the 3D uh, planning you did beforehand and also uh, the glenoid model you have on the table to estimate the amount of bone and the size and the shape of the bone you want to place in that glenoid. So you can do it uh, whatever way you want, either shape the glenoid graft and place it and fix it with a screw to the native glenoid or beforehand shaping it under the glenoid metallic base plate, like in this case. And then at the end, just fix it with a central screw and uh, the rest of the screws. Now, this is another software from another company, but uh, the, 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 the philosophy is exactly the same. So this uh, software allows you to play around and check uh, the placement and, and in terms of depth and version of the glenoid, it allows you to estimate the amount of bone graft that you will need. And uh, so once you get that, you can uh, have the company building the, the guide for you or uh, in case it's hard for you logistically or uh, in terms of uh, uh, economics, you just uh, use that software for you to estimate it yourself. It's not the same, but it's a very good help. And uh, this is another way of preparing the bone graft. So you can use uh, a shaver, you can, you can use a chisel or, or, or a saw, whatever you have available, uh, place the graft under the base plate, the metallic base plate and shape it whichever way you like. So uh, to make it get as close as you can to the pre-operative planning. And this is a uh, end result of uh, that previous case I showed with the correction of the version in an acceptable, very acceptable uh, result. However, there are some points still to consider considering this, tech, uh, this technology. This guide is manufactured based on a scapular uh, model that's made from CT scan cuts that have to be ma made following a specific protocol that has to include all the scapula. So it can be conditioned by cartilage loss, severe bone loss, deformities, or calcified labrum. So you have to be aware of that. It still allows you to, to um, I mean, it still demands you a good exposure of the anterior rim which is always desirable, but uh, you would have to uh, enlarge it a little bit. And the reaming is still dependent on the surgeon. So it, it helps you out with the placement of the K wire. But once you get to the next step of the technique, which is reaming the glenoid surface, you can't go all the way because there's no stop. There's no means of avoiding going too far deep. So you have to, uh, to know it yourself and be careful. Another thing you have to be careful about is over tightening the screws on soft bone or grafts, which can be over compressed asymmetrically. And then the base plate be positioned in, uh, in a way that's different from what was planned beforehand. So as final messages, PSI can avoid significant base plate orientation, uh, which is common in standard 2D planning and instrumentation. Uh, it allows, it has an important role, especially in severe glenoid deformations, or in those cases where you really need grafts, like in the case I showed you, but still the surgeon's expertise remains invaluable. So it's a, a clear advantage to lower volume surgeons uh, however, it allows you or it demands a longer planning time because you still have to, to wait for the, for the, for the guide to, to, to be sent over to your place. So it's uh, only for elective surgeries. However, you can still use the software in case it's available to you uh, to prepare and estimate uh, what to do and prepare the surgery even in urgent surgeries, but you would probably have difficulties to have the, the guide wire, uh, I mean the guide in case, uh, in case of need. 
uh, another important thing is that uh, there are no uh, 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 no cost benefits analysis in the in the literature so you wouldn't really know if in the long run it's worth spending the extra the extra dollar uh, for this technique uh, and there are no long-term clinical studies so you have uh, lots of them with uh, with uh, uh, short series but not long-term clinical studies not yet so is this the future well i really do believe it is the future there is no doubt about that but um, image guidance uh, is much more than this so you, you Today, you have technologies, other technologies available uh, using augmented reality, which is already used today widespread for training, mainly on, for training, uh, but not really in real life patients. But this technology and mixed reality as well allows you uh, to use video tracking for the placement of, uh, of that uh, Glenard base plate. This is uh, a pic taken from uh, the Nice Shoulder course that took place just a few weeks ago and it was quite interesting on this new technology. And uh, down here in the in the bottom of uh, of the of the screen, you can see this technology being used for the spine. And also, just last week, I guess uh, this was out and uh, posted on LinkedIn by Philippe Corbin uh, that uh, finally used this technology and mixed reality for the placement of his first uh, shoulder arthroplasty. So definitely the future is uh, in image guidance. Thank you. And uh, as uh, final words, I would like to invite you to come over to Warsaw. Uh, this is going to be the second specialty days uh, that will take place in, in Poland. The first one was in Madrid last year. It was a huge success. Uh, four sections of ESCA are represented there. Fortunately, uh, the ESA section was, was uh, awarded the, 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 the best organized uh, section of that meeting, which pleased us a lot. I was one uh, of the scientific chairman and I will be again uh, next year. So uh, feel welcome to come over. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gomez for that excellent presentation. I'm really excited to see the kind of work you're doing in Portugal. A uh, few questions. Uh, one is regarding the timing to surgery. See, once you have made a decision that you're going to do use patient-specific instrumentation, how much time does it take to develop it if you're planning to do surgery? Well, that depends on the companies. Uh, considering that, uh, well, about uh, three, four years ago, uh, most of the companies would take, would demand like uh, three, four weeks for you to send or to give them um, the, the, the CT scan of that, uh, of that patient. Now, in most of the cases, it would be them, the sales rep, um, going to the clinics, to the imaging clinic where it is performed, taking the CT scan with them, sending them over to the, to the platform uh, of the company. And then you would be sent an email for you to approve the planning they did and you could still change some things and then after approval they will build the guide send it over so that will take a few weeks now today uh, some companies allow you to play around the soft with the software uh, online by yourself you can upload the images by yourself as long as the the CT scan was performed following specific protocol. So that makes it a lot faster. And then you just click OK, and they build the, the, the guide. Still, that would take, I would say, a couple of weeks. I, I wouldn't know, a fortnight minimum. But still, having easy access to that uh, software platform is a great, great advantage, because uh, uh, in many cases, you wouldn't really, or you, you can uh, conclude that you don't really need to have the guide made so uh that costs you zero so you don't have any uh, further expense just for using the platform but if you realize it's going to be real hard to do it yourself with no guide you just have it made and pay uh well the hostel pays a bit more and uh, when you ask them to manufacture it and send it to you so where do they send it from generally is it from portugal or outside portugal uh from outside portugal 
they the companies had it centered in one or two places i would guess i'm not aware of the logistics of all the companies of course but i would say that uh, most companies would centralize it uh, in one place in europe because there's no point in centralizing it in, uh, in more places because well today you can have it sent over to anywhere in europe uh, in one day i would say Okay, so that is that that is one of the questions. The other one is the impact on the operation room time. So does it take more time for you or less time? Yeah, that's a very good question, and uh, I tried to to um, to touch on that uh, on that uh, specific point. It does not increase surgical time. So the technique is exactly the same. Uh, for instance, in uh, in the knee, and uh, although I'm a shoulder surgeon, I, I also did some uh, PSIs in, in in the knee, and uh, it, it's uh, faster because uh, you have a uh, the the instrumentation is chosen beforehand. So not only for the nurses in the OR, it's quicker because you don't have so much paraphernalia uh, in the OR room. Um, but also when doing it, you know beforehand that uh, you, you're 99% sure uh, about the size of the implant. So you don't have so many steps because you go straight forward to, to, to the end, just cutting, uh, considering or expecting all the, the estimations that were performed beforehand were correct. It's a little bit different in the, in the shoulder because uh, the instrumentation is exactly the same. The technique is exactly the same. This just allows you to place the K-wire, which is one of the steps of the shoulder arthroplasty technique. So it helps you with that step. Considering it helps you, it can economize time. The only thing that can take a little bit more time, but we're talking about one minute, not much more than that, is making sure you have all the bony prominences and landmarks visible uh, and within uh, easy access for you to place and stabilize the guide. That's it. So I would say that you economize in placing the K-wire one minute, two minutes, and you spend one extra minute in uh, getting rid of the soft tissues around the glenoid. So at the end, it's it's the same. And like computer navigation, computer navigation that takes a lot of time more. I never tried it. I don't have any experience with computer navigation. What about the cost? How much extra does it uh, require for doing a PSI in shoulder in Portugal? Uh, okay, even in Portugal, and I guess that applies to other countries as well, uh, the price changes from uh, setting to setting, whether you're in the public system, where you're in the private, where uh, whether you're working in a high volume uh, department or a low volume department. So uh, in average, I would say that, uh, well, in Portugal, it costs a little bit more than the PSI for the knee. And it should be close to uh, 800 euro, probably less today considering um, the market offers you uh, more uh more possibilities today so the offer today is larger so i would say that uh it's it's probably less than that but i am aware that uh, it was around that price about a couple of years ago thank you dr gomez the other one is if you quote a systematic review that was published in journal of shoulder and elbow by a few colleagues in uh, Russia University, they looked at the clinical outcomes versus radiological outcomes. Now, they say that the accuracy of radiological outcome is much superior, but the clinical outcomes do not correlate with these superior radiological outcomes. What is your take on that? But you mean using PSI? Yes. Uh, well, I'm not aware of that, uh, of that series you're mentioning. So they concluded that the radiological uh, results were higher or better yeah. or worse. Yeah, superior radiological outcomes, because like you said, your KY placement is right at the center. Okay. But they looked at clinical outcomes and they found that the clinical outcomes are more or less similar than when you use with conventional shoulder arthroplasty. Well, that may mean that it's probably not worth the trouble. <laughs> so uh, it may mean that uh, slight variations in the positioning of the of the K wire and the glenoid base plate wouldn't make much difference. 
So that's that's um, what we have to know and uh, take that into consideration before deciding to go for the PSI or not. But if you what has been your experience with your patients uh, when you compared with them conventional with versus uh, PSI? I feel safer using PSI. Uh, but you have to be judicious, obviously, because you can't have it made for all the all the processes. But you feel safer because uh, you are sure you have no doubts, or you you shouldn't have any doubts that you're placing it correctly. But obviously, uh, if you if you have some experience, then you can dispense it and reach a similar a similar results without using it. So, so I don't use it in all cases, of course. Of course, I don't. In what percentage of your patients do you use PSI approximately? Sorry, can you repeat that again? No, how many, uh, what is the percentage of patients who would you use a PSI? Like out of 100, how many would you prefer using a PSI? Oh, uh, well, I don't know, but 10% uh, or so. Because uh, in most anatomics, in the anatomic uh, prosthesis, you wouldn't really need it. Um, so we're talking especially about reverse. Now, the amount of reverse prosthesis that are being put today is, uh, is very high. But uh, many of those that are put today, not only in Portugal, but all over the world, are in prosthesis, are in fractures. So in those fractures, you wouldn't really need PSI because the deformation of the glenoid, unless uh, he had a, a pre-fracture uh, arthritis, uh, he wouldn't have any deformation of the glenoid. So you wouldn't have much trouble in, in placing the, the K-wire. So if you take out uh, the anatomical uh, prosthesis, the anatomic prosthesis, then the, the, the reverses in fractures, you're left with all the reverse. Now, within the reverses for arthritis, I would choose those with major glenoid bone loss or deformities. So I would say 10% or, or even less. Because in many of them, and I, I work in different settings, and I work in settings where uh, one specific place I work at uh, wouldn't really allow pain for, for a PSI guide. So either you take that patient somewhere else or um, have an extra effort during surgery, do the pre-op planning beforehand with the, with the same software, but do it yourself, just like before having PSI available. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gomez. I think that's all the questions that we have for this session. Thank you for joining us. It was really fantastic lecture. We learned a lot of new stuff. We, have, we got exposed to the fantastic work that you're doing in Portugal. It was a great honor listening to you. And thank you once again for joining us. And we really look forward for one more lecture because you have already authored a fantastic book on irreparable massive cuff tear. Thank you, Dr. Goplin. It was a, a real pleasure to join you and participate in, the, in this project of yours. Thank you. And uh, take care and I uh, will keep in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you.